All right. Here we go. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining us for our college admissions panel. My name is Tamer Memkij, and I'm the network administrator for the Holton Public Schools. I want to thank everyone for joining us. Um, before we get started with our event, I just wanted to go over some of the features of Zoom webinars that are available to everyone in attendance. Ms. Weggert will start off the webinar, and our hope is that the information that we are going to go over will answer many of the questions you may have. However, we will have a questions and answer session at the end. To ask a question, you can click the Q&A button located on the bottom of your screen and submit your question. And without further ado, I'd like to thank you for joining us and introduce our Director of Guidance, Ms. Christine Weigert. Hi, everyone. Good evening. My name is Christine Weigert. I'm the Director of Guidance here in Hawthorne. I'd like to thank you and welcome you to our event tonight. Tonight is our first ever virtual admission panel. Um, as much as we would have loved to have had this program, in person, live. We really wanted to provide the opportunity for as many people to join us tonight as possible. And unfortunately, many of our vets right now have um, some restrictions with travel. So this way we were able to include our college admissions representatives and allow these experts to really answer so many of our burning questions about the college application process and some changes and revisions that they may have on their campus as they review applications for our current senior class. Um, in addition to that, I know we do have some underclassmen joining us. Um, and with everything that is going on in the world today, there might be some questions as well too about how this may all be affecting their eventual college application process and review down the road. Um, so thank you everybody for joining us tonight. My admission representatives, we really appreciate you being with us and taking the time to be with us today. And without further ado, I would like to um, go over who we have here with us tonight. So with us tonight, we have college representatives here from eight different colleges and universities, um, not only in the state of New Jersey, but across the nation. We have Daniel Baker from William Patterson University. We have Maritza Davila, who is here from Passaic County Community College. We have Randy Ferguson from Quinnipiac University. We have Julie Field representing Bergen Community College. We have Karina Pedraza here from Fairleigh Dickinson University. Danielle Taglia from San Diego State University. And we were just saying before everybody came in, we are all envious of her and wish we could be out in California, even though she may not be there, but um, she's representing a beautiful campus. Laura Travis from University of Delaware, as well as Jose Vallejo from Ramapo College. Also with us tonight are our school counselors, and those are the people who will be working day in and day out with your students um, as they work through the college application process. So before we get started very quickly, um, and I'm just seeing here on my screen, my font is a little funky. Um, so I'm going to kind of make sense out of what I see. It looks like it mixed things up a little bit, um, but just a couple of quick reminders, especially to our seniors, okay? The process has not changed. Um, the college application process, completing your applications, completing essays, that has not changed. What we're gonna talk about mostly today is due to the current pandemic um, on the schools and are there any things that are going to be adjusted as your application is reviewed or hopefully just taking a little bit of stress off of you um, as we talk about things such as SATs, ACTs and so forth. Um, transcripts, okay, for my seniors. And again, I apologize. I don't know what happened with my font here. Um, transcripts for our seniors, those are going to be distributed this week and early next week in your English classes. So in terms of knowing your current grade point average and your class rank, you will get those documents over the next couple of days. Um, in addition to that, counselors will be reaching out to you regarding your senior planning meeting, which will really be an individualized, personalized, uh, uh, meeting for you to talk about what your individual plans are, okay? In addition to that, one last reminder, um, and my reps and I just spoke about this, rep visits through Naviance. We encourage all of our students, juniors and seniors, log into your Naviance account, check to see the college representatives that will be visiting us virtually. We have appointments almost every afternoon, one o'clock and two o'clock, and it's a great opportunity to meet with reps, some of these reps who are here today. Today, we'll be participating through rep visits. Um, great 
opportunity to meet with these reps in um, small groups and have individualized conversations about their campuses and universities. So I'm gonna stop sharing my screen and we are going to go into our grid view here where we have our representatives. Again, thank you so much for being with us this evening. What I am going to do at this point is actually turn it over to um, each of you to give you guys an opportunity to introduce yourselves, um, tell us a little bit about yourself and your campus, and then we will get to those burning questions that we have so we can talk about, um, you know, hopefully alleviating some of the stress and the anxiety that our seniors, for the most part, are feeling right now as they venture into this application process. So Maritza, we'll start with you up at the top. Um, if you could introduce yourself and talk a little bit about, you know, any news and updates with Passaic County Community College. All right, well, uh, thank you so much, Christine and everyone here today. Uh, my name is Maritza Davila and I am the Assistant Director of Admissions for Passaic County College. Uh, Passaic County College, uh, for those that uh, don't know, is a two-year community college and it is in Passaic County. I've been working at Passaic County now, I'm going into my 27th year. Many have said, wow, people don't normally stay in admissions that long, uh, but I love what I do. And I've been doing it for quite some time and uh, I look forward to continuing that work. Although with this pandemic, many things have changed the way we, the process is, uh, but in terms of, like you said, there's still an application process, which is done online. Uh, there is not a lot of one-on-one, -on -one, but we at Passaic County College do have the um, the um, the one-on-one, -on -one. I'm so sorry. Uh, the one-on-one -on -one, um, with students by a uh, scheduled meeting so they can actually go online. Um, one of the things that I do want to mention is for all our students, you're able uh, to go to our bookstore and purchase a laptop. So we have a laptop program for $199. I don't know if other schools have it as well. Um, I see some people nodding heads so you probably have the same program. So our students are able to obtain a laptop uh, for $199 that once you pay it, it is yours, okay? Um, you know, there's, the, in terms of testing, I know that's always a question. So the senior um, uh, transcript is really important. So please let the counselors know we would need their official transcript to be sent to us. And we are able through multiple measures to be able to um, uh, be able to assess their transcripts and do a placement instead of them having to do a test online, which we found that testing online has been a challenge. I don't know if any of the rep representatives here work with the testing department and are aware of that, but that's been a big challenge for us. Although again, we do have some one-on-one, -on -one, we do have classes online, virtual, um, remote, and some in person, the same way we do with testing. So that's just a little bit. There's so much more I can say. I just want to say thank you. I'm here for whatever questions, whatever is needed. I didn't touch upon financial aid. That's another piece, but We'll get back to that. We'll one. get to that. Thank right? you so much, Christine. Thank of you. Of course. Um, next, I'm going to go down to Laura, representing University of Delaware. If you wouldn't mind introducing yourself and letting us know a little bit about what's going down at uh, or going on down at UDEL. Um, Laura, you just need to unmute yourself. Of course. Okay. Thank you. Laura Travis, University of Delaware. I'm your counselor. So if you all have any questions after this, um, I'll drop my, my uh, email to you and feel free to reach out. But just quick overview about University of Delaware. Um, 18,000 undergraduate students, 150 majors to choose from, internship research opportunities, suburban setting, but urban access. Um, so lots of options, but a small campus feel. And in terms of what's going on with our application process for this year, um, we are test optional for you for next year only. And if you choose to go the test optional route for University of Delaware, we just ask that you answer three additional short answer questions um, in lieu of your test scores. And if you decide to apply test optional, you have the um, ability to add your test scores if you want to at a later point in time. So there is some flexibility there for you. 
And the questions are available online. So, you know, if you did want to get a head start with them, um, that's available for you. And of course, you know, there's early action opportunities November 1st and January 15th. And other than that, I think, um, you know, just visiting the campus. I know everyone wants to go visit their, the schools of interest, and hopefully we all will be able to do that in some way, shape, or form in the near future. Um, at UDEL, we're targeting the end of September for in-person, on-campus visits in a very limited capacity. You can check it out if you're interested on the website and register for a spot. Great, thank you, Laura. Um, Karina, I'm gonna turn it over to you, uh, Fairleigh Dickinson University, and just make sure you unmute yourself. Great, thank you. Um, so like you just mentioned, my name is Karina Pedraza and I'm representing FDU. So we're actually New Jersey's largest private university and we have about 12,000 undergraduate and graduate students combined. Um, we have two campuses located in Northern New Jersey. So we have one in Madison, close to Morristown, New Jersey, and then our other one in Teaneck in Hackensack um, that has a little bit more of our graduation, our um, upperclassmen population. And so with that, um, we are offering in-person tours right now. It's just a matter of contacting the admissions office and working with them because there are definitely some more strict regulations to make sure that it's safe for everyone who is coming. Um, besides that, we do have more sessions um, every day at 10 a.m. and at 3 p.m., whether you want to learn more about the university as a whole or about the Florham campus or about our metro, metro campus specifically with that. Um, but I would say at this point, um, if you have any questions, definitely reach out to me. I'm specifically the counselor um, for this county. So if you have any questions in terms of more of that admissions process or any like, personal circumstances, I can definitely help you with that. And then I'm also the liaison for the EOF program. So any questions with that can also come my way. Great, thank you, Karina. Julie, I'm gonna turn it over to you representing Bergen Community College. Hi there. So I'm Julie Field. Um, representing Bergen Community College. We have three campuses. Our main campus is in beautiful downtown Paramus, New Jersey. And we also have a campus in Hackensack and one in Lindhurst. Um, we are the largest community college in the state. There are 18 and Bergen is the largest with over 13,000 students. Uh, we do have 120 programs. So we have associate degrees, associate of science, um, Associate of Arts. We also have Associate of Applied Science, which are career degrees. And we have a lot of certificates and certificates of achievement. Um, we are not holding tours at this time. Um, we are not on campus. We got word yesterday that there's a very, very small percentage of classes that will be held on campus right now in the fall. Um, I hope to be back in the spring and open everything up. We have a brand new one-stop area that's being built. Um, and I really would like to have people on campus. You can drive through the campus. Um, there's no restriction on that, but you cannot go into any buildings at this time. I'm hoping soon. Uh, our application for fall of 2021 will open mid-October. There's no application fee. Going to Bergen or PCC is the same, if you're in an Associate of Arts or Associate of Science degree, it is the same as going to a four-year university for the first two years. So much so that my fellow colleagues here um, from other colleges know that there is a seamless transfer from public New Jersey state colleges from the community college. Uh, you can go in as a junior if you do two years at the community college. You can seamlessly go in as a junior if you're in an Associate of Arts or Associate of Science program. Um, it's relatively a lot less expensive, um, but you do end up getting that great four-year experience. I went to Bergen 112 years ago, um, and I was going to transfer to William Patterson, Montclair, but ended up at San Diego State. Um, they accepted all but one credit. So they did not like my archery class. I'm not sure why, but they didn't take my one archery credit. Um, but otherwise they took all of my other credits and I was very happy there at SDSU, but I got the experience of going and living away as far away as you can get and still be in the same country. But I also stayed close to home and grew up in those first two years. I matured, I was able to handle living alone. 
out in California um, because of going to Bergen for the first two years and getting my associate degree. So um, you can go to bergen.edu slash admissions and you can join us for a virtual in admissions information session. Right now we're holding them on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 2 p.m. So please join us and thank you for having me. Thank you, great. I am gonna pass it over to Jose. You just moved on my screen, Jose from Ramapo College, if you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. Jose, you just need to unmute yourself. You know, and I said to myself, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna, and I did it, anywho. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Jose Vallejo. I am an admissions counselor at Ramapo College of New Jersey. I've actually been working at Ramapo uh, in admissions for about 14 years. So I definitely am uh, building a strong career in college admissions. So, um, but um, really quick about our institution and what's happening now. Um, you know, we are New Jersey's smallest four-year public college. Our total enrollment is somewhere about 6,000 students, um, which really kind of provides all of our students that small classroom experience and direct contact with faculty members. Uh, but don't let that fool you because we have over 100 uh, majors, minors, and concentrations that students can, uh, can study at Ramapo College. We also have a number of new programs. Uh, we've, uh, we are launching a, uh, an MFA program in uh, creative music technology, as well as a uh, doctorate in nursing practice, which launched this fall. Um, so that only adds to the uh, arsenal of programs that students can study at Ramapo at the undergrad, graduate, and now doctoral level. Um, because of all of our growing graduate programs, we started developing also four plus one programs, where students can start off at an undergraduate major and then pay for an extra year and receive their master's degree um, in, a, in a relevant um, program. So for example, very popular right now is our elementary education uh, major, which has a four plus one with our special education program. So for five years full time, students can graduate with a master's degree in special education and get their certification to teach in the state of New Jersey at the elementary level. So we have a lot of new programs like that that, are, that we've generated. Um, on, our, on the admission side, uh, Ramapo College this year officially became a test optional institution. So students do not have to submit SATs or ACTs as part of their admissions process. Uh, if you want to, you can, if, but you don't have to. Uh, there is two stipulations with that though. Uh, at this moment, we are still requiring SATs for our nursing uh, major and our joint programs in the medical field, in the field of law and in therapy. Um, but, you know, we, one of the things that we've been definitely being, have been asked about was, um, is that policy gonna change uh, if the college board or the ACT continues to cancel exams at this point, we are monitoring these situations closely and we'll make decisions accordingly. Um, so, but uh, with that said, I would say, I would not necessarily worry about that at this stage. At this stage, it's really about getting to know the institutions that you are applying to. And at Ramapo, we have, this week we started doing limited campus tours. Uh, so uh, bringing in about, uh, about 20 people onto campus um, at a time to do a campus tour. It is an outdoor tour. Um, so far, the tours have been very successful um, where students have been able to see campus um, and actually uh, visit one or two buildings on the inside. Um, so we are able to do that, but we're also working to develop new content for students to connect with us. Our new uh, interactive page, uh, ramapo.edu forward slash learn, uh, allows for you to see all of our upcoming virtual events on campus for students that you can register for, as well as make an appointment uh, with the admissions council that's assigned to your county. Uh, lucky for you, I am the Passaic County uh, rep, so um, I will have my appointments uh, up there shortly for you to make one-on-one -on -one appointments with me uh, to do virtual appointments um, and really help you through the process. And this still is a process. So even though you're hearing that some schools are doing tours, some are not, it's still the same process. We're just doing it a little differently this year. And that's all. <laughs> Thank you so much. Dan, William Patterson University, I'm gonna pass it over to you. All right, uh, good evening. Uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules uh, to, to learn more from our colleges. 
Um, my name is Dan Baker, Associate Director of Admissions at William Patterson University. Uh, you know, we're, we're right down the street, uh, not too far from, from, your, from many of your homes. Uh, we're a public state university, medium size, uh, just under 10,000 uh, for our total enrollment, uh, including undergrad and grad. Uh, one of the biggest changes that we've had uh, due to the COVID-19 pandemic is in regard to freshman scholarships uh, for the upcoming fall 2021 class. Uh, we have now gotten SAT and ACT optional uh, for students to qualify for an academic scholarship. Uh, there'll be more heavy emphasis on overall GPA um, and rigor of the courses that students have taken in high school. But uh, that's one of the biggest questions we have received is in regard to scholarships, because we've always required that. Um, the only thing is we have moved up our deadline uh, because more students will qualify for scholarships in the past. Uh, typically, we had a February 1st scholarship deadline. We've actually, had, we're actually gonna have to move that up by two months, so December 1st. So uh, my big thing that I've been uh, preaching to students so far that I've met in information sessions or at panels like this is uh, to start the application process sooner rather than later. Um, if students have taken SAT or ACT uh, scores, they can uh, can uh, be awarded additional money uh, for, for high scores for that. Uh, much like what uh, Jose mentioned with Ramapo, we're monitoring for nursing. Right now, nursing is still requiring SAT or ACT. Uh, working closely with our nursing department to make sure that they're aware that many high qualified students have been unable to take the exam. Uh, and, and as Jose said, when, when we know if they make a change, we'll, we'll let those uh, students that are interested in nursing uh, know for sure. So um, it's a work in progress um, as of right now. Um, currently in terms of our classes on campus, uh, we are um, in a, uh, a period where we are allowing students at the uh, 2000 level or higher classes to move back onto campus to take some of their classes into more of a hybrid model. But all students that wanted to be online this, year, this semester were granted the ability to be online. Um, even if the class was meeting in person, our faculty are working with them uh, closely for those students that can't come to campus um, specifically for COVID-19 reasons. So um, I look forward to answering some of your questions and I'll pass it back to Christine so you can hear from some of our other counselors. Thank you so much. Uh, Randy, Quinnipiac University, I'm gonna turn it over to you and then last but not least, we'll get to you, Danielle. Yeah, sure. Good evening, everybody. Um, pleasure to meet y'all um, virtually. Uh, my name is Jenny Ferguson, Assistant Director of Admission Slash Coordinator of Multicultural Outreach at Quinnipiac University. Um, I would definitely, I would say uh, the our up to date um, changes within uh, the 2020 application um, is that we are, well, we've been test optional before, but now we're gonna be test optional for nursing, some of the health science majors, um, and yeah, I believe in some, some, of, the, yeah, some, some of the health science majors, um, and also do degree programs, um, and we could work with you on that. Um, in terms of, and then if you're looking for going into physician assistant, um, we are, we are requiring for you to, to hand in your test score, especially for three plus three um, law. And I'll explain about those programs a little bit later. Um, uh, we are requiring SAT scores for those. Now we have over uh, 55 uh, majors, 48 minors, 20 dual degree programs. The dual degree programs are the, the niche, I would say, for our uh, academic side. Um, and those dual degree programs are uh, programs that will get you a master's in a, in, a, in, a, in a short time, instead of having doing a master's program in five, five and a half years or six years. So uh, we have, again, over 20 um, and they, uh, most of them are three plus one. So basically three years in your bachelor's, you do your, your bachelor of science or your bachelor of arts. And then your last year will you do your master's. Um, we do, are we are offering tours. We've been offering tours since the summer. I think we're like one of the only one of the only schools in America that we're doing um, tours. Um, you have to register online um, at our Quinnipiac admissions website. Since you are going to be there anyways, we do have virtual information sessions that you can definitely uh, register for. We do have virtual interviews that you can definitely uh, register. Um, and I highly recommend for all health science students that you know, you know, want to get into those programs, I highly recommend that you do it. An interview, we have virtual tours, we do have an open house coming up 
on October 4th. So we have a lot of uh, virtual, but also in-person uh, events that you can definitely take a part of. I definitely do wanna say, I forgot all about this, I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> uh, uh, Quinnipiac University, where are located in Hamden, Connecticut. So it's a, bit, it's a little bit of shit, you have to get through the city to come to us. Um, but uh, it's a very beautiful campus, um, it'll, it'll be worth your time. Um, and if you have any questions or, or comments, um, you can definitely, I'll leave my email uh, in the in the chat. Um, function below and that's it, that's me. Thank you, nothing to be nervous about. Uh, Danielle, I'm gonna pass it over to you so you can tell us a little bit about San Diego State University. Okay, thanks, Christine, sounds great. Thanks everybody. Hope you're still awake and we still have your attention. Uh, I'm Danielle Toglia, and I am actually new to San Diego State University, although not new to higher education. This is my 20, I think, seventh year. Um, I moved to San Diego State as an employee in April during the middle of this pandemic. So like you, um, it's been a really new, exciting, and challenging time um, in and of itself. But I'd be more than happy to answer any questions or concerns, and I'll, I'll eventually share my contact information in the chat if you do have questions. We are the largest institution in, on the panel. So we have about 30,000 undergraduate students um, enrolled in seven academic schools in about 197 academic programs. So there's a lot of choice at SDSU. Um, one of the things that's new for us is that as an institution with a, uh, its own application, self-reported information, um, we are test blind. So uh, we're not optional, we're blind. That means that we are going to encourage you not to send any testing to us. We don't want you to fret about the testing. We don't want you to have to worry about sitting for the testing. We don't want you to have to pay to mail the testing, et cetera. We want you to forego the testing information this year um, in our application process <clears throat> and not send it. So we'll be looking primarily obviously at academic work therefore. Um, also new is that obviously we are uh, usually a very busy place with a two year housing requirement, which this year has been lifted. So we have 50% of our students living with us about 3,500 beds this year, usually about 7,000 undergraduate students living um, on the college campus. So that's a change. Um, we also have 3,047 classes um, of which about 7.5% only have 100 students or more enrolled, which as you can imagine with 30,000 students is a great number. Um, but right now we only have 220 in-person classes. So that percentage is quite small. We are looking to keep students safe for the semester. And so we have about 220 in-person classes, which mostly consist of, as you can imagine, arts. So that would be art, music, dance, and theater courses, which technically should be in person, along with some science and lab um, courses, biochem physics, for example. Um, we are um, a very large place, again, with its own application process. So I do encourage you, if you are interested, to take a look at our website for that information. You won't find us on Common App. That's no change. <laughs> we have a self-reported application. Uh, we are in the middle of San Diego, the second largest city in California about a five hour flight from here. So we're definitely far, um, but easy to get to. We're about 25 minutes from the airport once you land um, in the city of San Diego. Uh, and for example, today it was a high of 88 degrees and sunny. Um, so gorgeous weather, about uh, 78 to 88 degrees, um, almost 12 months a year. Um, so we have a lot of outdoor activity. Um, it's a very busy place out of doors. We are very close to the beaches and trails. Uh, to the desert, not far from LA, San Francisco. Um, so a, a great place to visit virtually. You can only visit us virtually currently, although we don't have a closed campus, there's no gates or entrances. Of course, you could walk through if you're local or if you're in the area, but we would encourage you again to stay safe and to visit us virtually online. And you could do that by um, going to our website again. And you could also, for example, visit us um, in panels in different professional settings. Um, you can also join us, Ask an Aztec um, is a current student po uh, population that's more than happy to offer their um, insights um, as to what it's like to be a student for you. And you can contact me directly if you do have any questions or concerns as I am your regional representative and I've represented students from New Jersey for 20 years. So I'm quite familiar. I, I lived, um, I grew up in Hudson County, uh, born and raised. I've, I've lived in Bergen County and I currently reside in Monmouth County. So I'm pretty familiar with the state uh, and more than happy to advocate for you if you do have interests. So thanks Christine again for having me. Good to join you guys tonight. 
Great. Well, thank you all for introducing yourselves. We're going to get to it. Um, I actually think individually in some capacity, we probably started to answer some of the questions um, that we're going to go over here today. But, um, you know, at the same time, I know it does vary by campus and by university. And I would say for our students and our parents who are watching, take that as um, you know really being the recommendation that you need to check with each and every school to see what the requirements are and what adjustments they are making. There's going to be a lot of I think similar trends but each campus and each university um, you know they're making their own individual decisions. So with that said um, you know we have discussed this I think a little bit already but maybe if you could just jump in you know if there are any substantial adjustments that you are making on your campus in regards to the application process. We did talk a little bit already about SATs being SAT optional, most of you guys. Um, if students don't submit SAT, ACT scores because it's optional, is there anything else you are looking for from them? Um, you know, so if you could maybe just jump in with how you're really going to be looking at that application this year as you review it, taking into consideration, um, you know, just what the last number of months have been for our students who will be applying as seniors this fall. So I just want to recommend that there is a website called fairtest.org, which has been updated. And if you are um, a student, obviously that's considering applying to college this year as a senior, and you want to know if schools are test optional, you can um, see that list. The list has grown tremendously this year. I think we're up to 67% of the institutions in this country alone that have gone test optional, flexible, blind. Um, but it's a good place to start um, because we want to be sure that um, if you are a senior applying this year, right, you're meeting the requirements of the institutions that you're looking at. That's most important, right? You have to be sure that you're following directions. You're answering all the questions that are asked of you. That hasn't changed. There's deadline dates. Um, there's different criteria. And we know that it can be an overwhelming and confusing year, as many of you are not able to just walk into your guidance office um, and, and ask questions. So please be sure that you're looking at this website, for example, and the website of the schools directly that you have interest in to determine your, um, your testing criteria for that institution. It's always best to come to our websites directly to get the information that's necessary, right? Because it's the most up-to-date and the most current. Um, and again, follow directions, be careful. Um, making sure that you're sending the right information to the right places. Um, and be careful too, that if you're looking at test optional institutions, test optional does not mean nilly willy sending your test scores just because, right? It's your ability as the student to advocate for yourself. So if your testing is not reflective of the criteria, the information that the institution lists for you, in terms of their grades and their scoring, you may wanna withhold that testing. And if you find that that testing will advocate for you in the process, it's reflective of how hard you're working. It makes sense in the information that's posted on the college website. In other words, you feel fit in that median, for example, maybe 50th percentile, then have conversation with your counselor because it could be that that testing will advocate for you and that you should be sending it. If you're not sending testing, please be sure that you're meeting the criteria that is offered to you in terms of fulfilling the requirements. That could be an interview, that could be essays, that could be additional letters of recommendation. And do be sure that the testing is required, um, is not required of both the application process and the merit process so that you can be sure that you're eligible for academic money. I, I, I would just add, um, and I didn't go into, you know, the college and the population and the campuses, um, but we have four campuses, uh, Patterson being the main campus, Passaic, um, Wanakew, Haskell, and uh, the Public Safety Academy in Wayne. I would just also, in addition to what Danielle said, you know, with Passaic County College, we don't require SATs, uh, but we recommend them. But if you don't have them, that's okay. The transcript is, is what's going to help us, okay? That high school transcript that you make sure that it comes through um, uh, parchment, that it comes directly from the high school to the admissions office, that's gonna be beneficial for us. We have a team in our testing department that will uh, review that transcript and do your placement based on the high school transcript. All right, so that I would say for Passaic County College would be very important. 
And in terms of, you know, if you want to come to school, uh, but you're not ready to do the in-class full, you know, there's three ways that you can do it with us. And that is through uh, um, virtual, um, you know, remote, uh, online, all online. And then there's the, you know, not all classes, but a few classes are being held. There are very, like our nursing department, radiography, you know, some of the sciences with labs, that is something that's a little difficult. Our culinary arts program also. So, um, you know, we're willing, what we need everyone to leave here with today is to know that, uh, I, and I believe I can say this for all, that we are here to assist in whatever is needed, okay, to take you to the next level. And I think that everyone here would agree with me. And if you're just not ready to go far, just know, and, and you know, this used to be our old model, you know, nothing so near can take you so far. So you can start off at your community college at Bergen or another community college and then work yourself into the four year. Um, as Julie said, you know, that was her experience. I always say, I should have done that. I should have done that. I'm a graduate of Monmouth. And, you know, I, I think about when I started working at Passaic County College, some of the students that I saw walking around with the same books that I had when I was at Monmouth, you know, and I started at PCC when I was 22, so I was still young. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's just a little bit of, of, of you know, what I want to share in terms of what PCC is doing to assist the student to get started. Um, for Quinnipiac, um, we are looking at you holistically. Um, or again, for some majors we, we have are test optional. Um, so again, you don't have to feel compelled that you have to send your test scores, but as I'm echoing with the, the, the last two uh, colleagues of mine have said, uh, if you have the test score, submit that. Um, with Quinnipiac, we're gonna look at you holistically. Um, so your essay is really gonna matter, your transcripts is gonna matter, your letters of recommendation is gonna matter, um, and then your extracurricular activities. Quinnipiac University is very huge on extracurricular activities, and I don't know if any other colleges are big on that. But the reason why we're big on extracurricular activities is because we want to see that you are able to have a healthy balance between academic life and student life. Because, you know, at the end of the day, we're all humans. We're all going to go through life. We're all going to go through ups and downs, especially right now. There's always something going on. But we want to make sure that we see that you are able to keep that balance. Also on application, we're going to have a section for COVID. Um, so that way you guys don't have to give us an old essay. And I know all of us are going to be like, oh, we're going to read so much COVID essays. Uh, but you don't have to put all your, 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 your essay um, as COVID. We have a separate um, a supplement question that you can write. What will happen or how did you go um, so, survive COVID, basically? You know, how did you uh, process it? How did you uh, finish your, your last school year with it? And how are you still going through it right now? Um, so as, as, as I'm saying that right now for Quinnipiac and an echo for everybody, um, don't, don't take your feet off the gas pedal, keep that, keep that foot right on, keep going, keep going strong. And again, we are all here to help you to make sure you get into the school that you want to get into. It doesn't matter if you want to get into Passaic or Quinnipiac or, or, Fair, or Fair Lake Dick. I can't even say that, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but, it, but at the end of the day, we wanna make sure that you're going to the school that you wanna go into so that you can um, ex expand your education. So, uh, you know, at this point, a number of our students, actually the majority of our students have yet to be able to successfully complete or take an SAT or an ACT. Um, they are still working towards hopefully uh, getting one in. We have a September date scheduled, we have an October date scheduled, and we also have a school date scheduled for school day SAT for students who registered. So we're really working hard to get our kids to get test scores. Um, I think the students right now that are in a little bit of panic mode are the ones who are going to be applying to specialized programs. So in, in hearing some of your feedback, um, you know, some of your schools are making adjustments, you know, some of you are still looking for those test scores to be part of a nursing application, to be part of a, um, you know, PT, athletic training, engineering type of an application. Is there going to be any flexibility perhaps with, um, you know, deadlines for those applications to come in if 
student cannot get an SAT in until let's say November. Um, you know, I'm just curious to hear with those students who just really have not been able to successfully have one of those administrations, is there going to be any consideration or flexibility with those applications if those tests are still needed to be considered for those students? So just um, to answer that question and to build off what Danielle had recommended um, about test optional, at least at University of Delaware, um, great suggestions to check the website for the median scores for both the regular college and the honors college and see if your test scores fall within that range. And then, you know, talk with your guidance counselor because it is going to be a personal decision whether you decide to apply test optional or not. Delaware, all majors um, are test optional. So even the engineering, nursing, the highly competitive majors uh, are will be test optional and all merit-based scholarships um, will be considered without test scores. You know, I think that, I, I think that with, um, oh, sorry. Um, you know, I, I, I think that that's the question to ask this year. Um, as I mentioned before, our nursing program, our joint programs are still requiring students to submit these exams, but we're also not going to, you know, if everything gets canceled up until December, like we're not gonna be like, well, sorry, you know, we have, you know, of course, I think every college that's in this position will be looking closely at what's happening with the college board, what's happening with the ACT, and make decisions that are going to be the best for their students that are applying. Uh, again, you know, all of us work in offices of admissions. So our goal is to help you through this process uh, as you are applying to our institutions. Um, but on that same note, I think this is the year where we really, uh, I think all of us will want to impress on you is that you as students who are applying to our institution need to uh, be a little more uh, of an advocate for yourselves, right? So even if you know, you're know you still concerned about are these tests happening or not happening? What's gonna happen if I wanna apply for nursing to Ramapo and, you know, and I can't get the test, what's gonna happen? Call us. Uh, all of our offices, even though we might be working remotely, we're still here for you to help answer your questions to guide you to what's happening on our individual campuses at that moment in time to help you through this process. Um, and I think this, this year more than ever, it's so important for students to really uh, connect with the admissions offices and the officers that are working with you and reviewing your application. Great, I love that. I think uh, that's- To build off the, uh, the SAT thing real quick, um, you know, if, if we, if students aren't able to take the SATs, we're never going to have enough students meet the SAT requirement to fill our nursing program. So the nursing department is going to have to do something right at some point. The only other program with us that requires SAT is to the honors college. And they've already made a decision that if a student took the PSAT, they can use that instead. And they've, they've minimized the, the, you know, how much they're looking at the SAT anyway. So, um, yeah, Jose, you know, is a, exactly spot on that. Uh, you know, we're, we're all going to adapt at some point if they keep canceling all these tests. So not to worry too much. Great. Thank you so much. Um, so we touched upon visits a little bit as well, too. And it sounds like each campus is handling visits a little bit differently. Some of you are allowing them, some of you are not. Um, you know, if you could maybe just jump in with some other opportunities that you are providing students if they cannot come onto campus for a visit, whether it's virtual open houses, um, you know, virtual meetings with you as an admission representative, just other ways that they can connect as they try to, um, you know, find the right place in the home for them next year. I can I can share that um, we are doing by appointment, so you can do a one on one in person if you wanted to, but if you did not for whatever reason or cannot uh, attend. Uh, one of those sessions, you can actually go on pcc.edu slash visit, and then you can sign up if you want a one-on-one -on -one Zoom with the admissions office, with financial aid, with a bursar person, with advisement, you can set up an appointment that you can do virtually with someone. So we'll do it Zoom, 
Um, we, we did have a, a, a soft, what we call a soft open house. We had about 15 students for it being the first time, not bad. Um, so we do, and we're going to be planning more of those sessions. So I would just say, go online to PCC edu slash visit and sign up for one of those sessions so it can be in person or it can be through um zoom i mean the nice thing i think christine now about um maybe a virtual world is that you know you're not limited so if you want to look at sdsu in california you can do so uh from the comfort of your living room tonight right after we hang up um, I, you know, I, I would say that in terms of the visits, it's um, it's a pretty extensive process. Most of us will just be re replicating what we do in person online. So, you know, you're able to do the visit, you're able to do an information session, an interview, um, a tour, talk to a student, um, see what the residence hall looks like. It's it's just all online, um, either fortunately or unfortunately for you, depending on on how you view it. Glass half full, I hope, um, for right now. So. Although nothing replaces a visit, we know, right? Nothing, I always say nothing replaces, if you can see me, you know, this, it's not about the glossy brochure and it's, you know, and it's not right now about, you know, those things. It's about your heart when you step onto the campus and that, for example, is lacking right now. We hope that by the time, you know, we may open in the spring, you're able to do the visit once you're admitted, for example. I think for now, though, we want you to be encouraged that we're all, um, you know, offering different types of programming that's available to you. And, and again, reach out as often as you can, um, given that your day may be shortened and you have less time that you're spending in a classroom. You know, spend some of that time that you are not spending right now in the classroom doing some research and, and you know, on your college process. FDU, we are also holding um, appointments in person for our campuses. And I would say my best advice is to come earlier rather than later, um, especially with the weather and knowing the climate that's happening outside, especially with the pandemic, and everything that's changing. We don't know how long these policies are going to be put into place. So if you know that a school has one, you know, I would say earlier, def def better than later will help you out in that process. And then, you know, really just going online and just investigating the parts that they have online to really making sure you find that comfortable balance. Because more than ever, I know all these schools, we have more information sessions, we have more online features, we have even more ways to communicate with ourselves. So definitely check out that option first and then proceed, you know, to really getting that in-person feel if it's available. But it's always just contacting the admissions office and just making sure that that's available for you. Um, and also, you know, as you're looking at our websites and you're looking at virtual events that we're hosting, um, you know, student panels and all of these wonderful things, don't forget that we all pretty much have social media outlets, but we're also doing a lot of events uh, and opportunities for you to connect with the, with the colleges. Uh, for example, uh, at Ramapo's uh, admissions uh, Instagram page, we host uh, we host uh, Ask a Counselor and Ask a Student um, stories where you can send us your, through, uh, I'm still new to the Instagram, so I'm going to say you send us your, your tweet or whatever it is, your message to us on Instagram, um, and ask your questions, and we will answer them live uh, for you in our stories. So and the great part is that if you miss it, you can always go back uh, onto our stories and go back and hear those, those questions and answers, uh, because chances are that they're going to be someone's going to ask the question that you wanted to ask about. Um, so, you know, lots of different ways. Uh, be creative in how you're, you're thinking about how are we going to connect, um, you know, with, uh, with these colleges, you know, uh, and know that we're all, you know, we're all going to work to try to have all of our uh, in-person events that we normally would do in the fall, that we're going to replicate those uh, virtually uh, to make sure that you really understand what it means to be a student on our campuses. Great, thank you. Um, so I wanna to touch upon merit scholarships a little bit and maybe financial aid. Um, in terms of financial aid, we are having our financial aid night next week. So I think a lot of those more specific questions will have answered during that time. Um, but in terms of merit scholarship, and this kind of goes back to the test score as well too, um, You know, will other things be taken into consideration when it comes to merit? scholarship aid, if you are test optional now or test blind, um, you know, I'm assuming the test scores may 
not be something that is considered for the merit scholarship. Sometimes I know though, with a lot of campuses, even if you are test optional, schools are still looking for those test scores for consideration for merit aid. Um, you know, so if you could touch upon that. And then I think some families are a little concerned too, just with COVID, if there were changes in their financial situation at home, um, you know, how that might be taken into consideration once financial aid packages, um, you know, will have to be reviewed and awarded to students. Yeah, so um, with Quinnipiac, uh, regardless of test scores, you you will receive a merit-based scholarship. And, and again, it all depends on your transcript. Um, and it ranges from twelve to $30,000. Now, if you do have your test score, we do give a little bit more in, in merit-based scholarship. Um, so uh, it's not like $10,000 more, but it's, it's just a little bit more. Um, again, it's all, it all depends on how you feel comfortable in handing in the test score. Second, financial aid. Uh, we cover about 90% of all students, um, uh, regardless of financial background. It, again, it, it all depends on your FAFSA and then merit-based scholarship in the, or the, so need-based and merit-based, combine that together, that's your financial aid. Um, so I definitely want to say, please, 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 please get on the ball with FAFSA. Uh, I know that's, it's, it's going to open up in a few weeks. Um, so definitely get, get the ball rolling. Talk to your parents. Try to get those papers together. Because from what I remember about FAFSA, that was a pretty long process. So you want to, you want to get on the game early um, so that way by the time you get admitted to your school that you want to get into, you don't have to go worrying about running around like, oh, I have to do my passport. How did I get this paper? I have to, you know, everything will be smoothly transitioned into uh, to, to that school you got admitted. So um, that's that's financially for us. For us at Passaic County College, you know, it's a little different in terms of merit. Uh, we look on, on, on need. And uh, it, very importantly that yes, you do do the FAFSA because that's one way that we can determine the need. But we also have seen that uh, there are some individuals that don't qualify for financial aid. So there's other institutional scholarships that we have. And just based on the fact, if you apply, don't qualify for aid, we are able to, depending on the amount of credits to issue you grants. We also have the community college opportunity grant for those individuals who meet the criteria in terms of going to a community college first, uh, do not receive financial aid, meet that income, which is a little higher than the normal person that would get financial aid for a community college. So there is monies out there and you know there is assistance. We just want the person um, to, to reach out to us because we wouldn't know. And then you mentioned something about COVID. And I think that um, all of us here at admissions, I don't think there's anyone here from financial aid, but there is what's called professional judgment. And I just yesterday was working with two students um, and I'm just doing my own thing. I'm going to, I'm not going to lie to you. If somebody says to me that they, they need to see me one-on-one -on -one and I'm not in the office because we're, I'm two on or off or three in or virtual. It's, it's, it's crazy, right? I've actually set up my dining room table to say, all right, parent and child. All right. You want to come? You're welcome to. And obviously I got to know you, you know, but what I've done is, had the conversation and been able to do the connection with a financial aid office because these are new students. They're so scared. They don't know. And where they were declined financial aid because of the income in 2018, 2019, right? They're looking that is also, but COVID happened in 2020. These individuals are going to be getting aid, full aid, because of that professional judgment. So all I say to your counselors, to you as a director, to please communicate and have those parents with their children. Because a lot of times the students don't know. They don't inform the parents. The parents are not given the correct information and then we're not able to assist. So I know, listen, I'm admissions, but to get that student in and not just, because we're not about numbers. If I was, if I worked on commission, I hope you rich and I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> this is purely to assist our students to get to the next level. I would say that in terms of the financial aid process here, again, you want to be really careful and you want to be sure that you're always crossing your T's, dotting your I's, following directions, making sure you're filing the right information, et cetera. So financial aid comes in a lot of different ways and forms. 
So financial aid, right, is borrowed money, it's free money, it's loan, it's work study, it's institutional money that the universities give out, it's the uh, aid that a state might give out, um, it's a, an alumni grant, it's talent-based scholarships. Um, that all might sound very confusing, but it's every type of money that an institution will give you to offset the cost. Um, please be sure that you're filing the FAFSA form, that's fafsa.gov as a website. It's a free application, hence the term free application for federal student aid, FAFSA. Um, so be sure that you are fi filing that form as it is universal for every institution, again, that you're applying to in the United States. And that will package you for institutional money, loan and work study at any institution that you're admitted to. But in addition to that, you could be asked to file additional forms depending on the institution that you're looking at in terms of scholarship money. So that could be merit, that could be talent, that could be athletic if you're looking at a division one institution as an athlete. So just be sure again that you're careful, have conversation with your counselor for guidance. And then please be sure to reach out to us as your representative at the institution so that we can either connect you to the financial aid office or we will point you in the right direction. Super, thank you. So we're just about at eight o'clock. Um, what I would like our viewers who are participating through Zoom, any of our students or parents, if you do have any questions, if you could please put them in the question and answer right now. Um, and we'll go through those while we're waiting to see if we get any questions. Um, what I would like to ask our reps, if you have any recommendations or um, any advice that you would give to a current senior right now, and then maybe current advice that you would give to an underclassman, um, you know, just with everything that's going on today with your application process with your university, any advice that you would give them, please shout it out while we wait to see if we have any questions come in. I'd like to mention um, advice for a junior or a senior, be a great high school student. If you are, you can attend the community college free. If you're an NJ star student in the top 15% of your class identified as a junior or a senior, top 15, one five, you can have up to five semesters free at the community college and then transfer anywhere you want to go afterwards. Um, the New Jersey schools, the public schools, and I believe FDU as well. Um, there's an NJ Stars 2 program where you can get a nice um, scholarship afterwards. So if you are just a terrific student in high school, ranked in the top 15%, you don't have to worry about tuition. You can go to school free, and then that's as in free, um, and move on from there. So that's all you have to do is just be really good in high school and get ranked really high. Thank you. Um. You know, I, th I think right now you can imagine that we are really all in this together. <laughs> that is a, a current theme, right, for, from, um, you know, for most of us. And, and we really are here, um, it, it, you know, to help you and guide you and point you in the right direction and support you and counsel you. Um, for many of us, um, you know, we, we've been, uh, I'll just, I won't, I won't date myself, but we've been doing this for a very long time. <laughs> Um, you know, and, and our goal is to help you through this process, whether it's um, at SDSU or any of the places that I've worked or any of the places on this panel. So be sure that you utilize your counseling staff um, and you, um, you obviously, um, you know, take advantage of their expertise and their, their contacts. Um, please be sure that you keep yourself organized through this process, that you meet deadline dates that you ask questions, that you advocate for yourself as a young person, that you take responsibility and ownership in the process. Um, the more that you can do for yourself, the better, right? We, we um, love responsible students, um, you know, who reach out to us and, and wanna make the effort to get to know us better. That's our goal is to get to know you. We wanna be sure that you are finding the right fit for yourself. And there's a lot of great places, right? There's 4,000 colleges and universities, again, in the US alone, there's a lot of choices. I've worked at great institutions and graduated from even different institutions that I'm very proud um, you know, to have worked for and, and gone to, um, but they might not be the right fit for you. And so we wanna be sure that you're finding the right fit for yourself. Um, be sure to ask questions. Um, it's all a learning curve, we understand, but take your time, be sure to follow directions in terms of the application process. Take your time with your search. 
um, don't do your search for anyone else but yourself, right? It's not about your parents or your neighbor or your boyfriend or girlfriend, et cetera. It really is a process for you. And we do want to be sure that you're finding the right fit for yourself. And if you are not able to be engaged personally and in person, please do as much as you can virtually to get to know the institutions that you're looking at better. So that might be NACAC fairs, Strive Scan fairs, local panels like this, right, that your high schools um, presented. It could be, again, all of the virtual information that we are offering to you on our websites. But there's lots of ways to get to know the places. And if you have, you know, co classmates and colleagues and you sat with somebody in Eagle Scouts or a class, you know, a, a virtual a class, you know, through the college process, reach out to students that are graduates and alumni and neighbors that have graduated. It's always a good resource for you. Um, not the end all and be all, of course, right? But for them to share their experience with you, I think could be a good indication of whether it's a good fit for you. So try to utilize all the resources that you have at your disposal. I would say, Christine, to add to that, definitely questions. No question is a dumb question. And I would just add to that also to include the parent because what I've seen in my experience at the community college where the, the parent reaches out to us, thinks that the student has applied, hasn't applied. So if you can be uh, uh, inclusive, you know, and, and, and try to bring in the family. And if you have a brother or sister of your first time generation, then we get it that the parent doesn't know the process, the student neither. I would say start now. What you're doing, Christine, is excellent. It's the beginning of the of the school year for them and, and within with everything that's going on, start early. I know at the community college, we have open enrollment. So the application, if you wanted to apply, you are able to do that now and just start the process. And like I said, ask any question and you can ask it as many times as long as we are able to make sure that you get it that's when we'll, we'll, we'll leave you alone. But if not, we're gonna to continue to be there. But I will give that extra advice to bring in the parents, okay, or a brother or someone who's gonna assist you and keep that communication open with your um, high school counselor. All right, so we did have a few questions, but thank you to my reps. They um, were individualized questions specific to um, specific schools. So my reps were kind enough and answered those students um, individually. Thank you. I am lastly just going to open it up. My guidance counselors here, my school counselors, any last minute questions that you have based off of the conversations that we had here today? I don't have any. Um, I think you guys did a great job answering all the uncertain questions that we have here regarding COVID and merit-based aid and financial aid. So really thank you so much for taking the time here um, and kind of making uh, this process uh, you know, a little bit more transparent because I know this is really very stressful for our kids, for our parents, you know, for us and for you guys, you know, just to kind of make this work this year. So um, thank you so much for giving all that really valuable information to our families and our kids. Christine, if I could just add just something for the counselors, anyone that was part, we don't know who the participants were in terms of parents and the students, but if anyone would like information from Passaic County College and we can get you uh, on our mailing list, on our email list, if you can let uh, uh, your director, your counselor know so that way you can share that information and we can shoot you an email thanking you and then any questions, we could just have that one-on-one. -on -one. Our application and every the whole process is online. Thank you. I think one thing that would be great for you guys to do, I know we were talking about it. If you guys could all put your contact information in the chat, um, you guys are starting to do that. You read my mind. So that's great. So that would be great for our, our, our families. Yeah. And Christine has all our contacts. <laughs> yeah, so, you no, know, students, so students, parents as well, and thank you reps for putting the information in the chat, but anybody who would like to specifically get in touch with any of our individual reps, um, email myself or your school counselor, and we can get you that information. Um, so I would like to very much thank all of you for your time tonight. I know you have busy, crazy schedules. You're still trying to wrap your head around everything um, that's going on right now with your application process and reviewing 
doing applications and getting out there and talking to students and families and so forth. So we value your time. We thank you for joining us tonight. Um, this was great conversation. And hopefully, I think it's probably nice for you guys to come together as well too, to hear about what's going on on each of your respective campuses. So thank you again. Thank you to our families and our students for watching. We hope that this was a valuable experience for you. Um, if you have any questions following, please reach out to us and we will get you contacts or answer those questions um, as, as best as we can. All right. Thank you Thank again, you. everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Bye. Bye.